Hi, this is Talon Jane. This is my week five FTT 210 practical application submission video. Today is April 22nd. Uh, my references for this week is going to continue to be the muzzleloader lab pages 16 through 20. Um, this week we're going to go over the thimbles. We're going to uh, probably have to inlet part of the barrel. Uh, let's see, we're going to install the barrel tenons and we're going to do the stock pins and that's it. Oh, and we have to shape the rear thimble as well. So uh, you shape that instead of the wood. So uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and move over to the bench and talk about what we have and what we need. Uh, this week, we're going to focus on the rear thimble, the front thimble, and these barrel tenons. These are the tenons here. They get installed into these dovetail grooves here at the bottom of the barrel, so they'll slide in there. Um, the problem with that is that these are rough cast and this is machined, so we may have to file these to get them to slide in there nicely. Let's just see. Yeah, it's oversized right now, so we'll file those just a little bit to get them to slide in there nicely. Um, the back of our barrel, um, we're gonna need to use our, what do they call it? Prussian blue inletting black compound here to basically um, ensure that we get this inlet into the stock. Um, otherwise, we won't be able to get these tenons in the right place. Once we do that, we'll be drilling We'll be drilling down through the stock. Uh, let's see, right about here. We'll be drilling through the stock and into the thimbles, uh, which will go in place here. Let's see how tight that is. So we're gonna file that so that that fits. We're gonna drill down into that and into the brass. And then we are going to do the same thing uh, at the front thimble, which will be up here at the front of the uh, stock. And then the instructions mention that we should be uh, using the screws to thread the brass, which is totally fine since these are metal screws and the brass is softer. However, uh, it's not really the right way to do it. So we're gonna go ahead and do it the right way. The threading for these is, these are M4, uh, let's see, four millimeter, 70.7 rather. Uh, that's the threading. So this is the tap that you need rather if you're going to try and tap these. And it uses a number 30 uh, drill bit. So what we'll do is we'll drill these. Um, this one's already, this one's already tapped it looks like. Let's see. Yep, so. So basically the goal is to create this same hole on this one. Once we get this in place, uh, we're gonna do the exact same thing as, as basically drill and tap this one so that it matches. So this number 30 drill bit um, will basically, where's it? Oh, it's on this one. So we'll drill the hole, Let's see how that fits in there perfectly. And then we'll use this tap and our tap handle to put threads into the rear thimble. And then in the top, um, you'll need a countersink. Uh, I saw a few other videos where people just used a bigger drill bit. That's fine, but doesn't really quite leave the, the same clean uh, look that a countersink does. Um, so this will go in the top, uh, basically, so that when we screw this down in, it sits flush under the barrel. Uh, for our pins here, oh, let me grab this. Uh, zero. Okay, so for our pins, looking at like a 2.9-ish, 2.99, 2.98, 2 2.91. So right in there is gonna be where our uh, pins are. Uh, I went through a few different sets of drill bits that I had um, until I found these two. One is an eighth, which um, is basically the size that I think it's intended to be. 
but that comes in a little big, right around three millimeters. This one here comes in almost exactly 2.94, right around that 2.95, almost exactly what the pins are. And I've searched to try and give you exactly what it is. And best I can make out, this is a number three. Um, it says SSH or maybe HSS rather and a number three. Uh, so if anybody's watching this and knows exactly what this drill bit is, as far as size wise, feel free to put a comment so that other people know. But uh, basically what I went with was going through zero. Oops, rather millimeters. And just measuring until I found the one that I thought was going to be close and tie to these ones. Um, and it, I mean, that this drill bit's pretty much exactly. So the only thing is this drill bit is um, for wood, not metal. I think it'll go through this cast just fine. If it doesn't, then I'll switch to this uh, 1 8 drill bit, which is slightly larger, but should be able to handle the steel. <clears throat> and then that'll allow me to do the pins and that, that should still work as well. So if all you have is a 1 8, I think you're gonna be fine too. So that's why I have those two drill bits. Um, lastly, you'll need a clamp. Uh, this will be for when you're clamping the barrel down to the stock uh, before you drill through to drill out the tenons for the pins. Um, and also when you're drilling, when you're clamping your rear uh, thimble to your stock uh, before you drill it to put its threading in. So that's what you're going to need there, I think. With that, obviously you're gonna need uh, your inletting tools, so any of your um, chisels or whatever else, you're gonna need those as well. If you don't have one of these, you can use the one that we got um, with the machining class or whatever. Um, this is just a nicer one, holds better. So that's what we're gonna use for putting in our threads. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. So obviously, again, the instructions do not call for you to thread. Oh, there we go. So we're going to have to shorten these. Uh, so for that, I will probably thread these into a thin piece of wood or steel and we'll shorten these down. I may just take them out to the two by 72 grinder. You can use a file, you can use grinder, you can use whatever. We're gonna shorten these down uh, just so that they don't protrude into the hole that your ramrod is gonna go into. Uh, so we'll do that and that's pretty much it we'll talk about measuring and everything else uh, when we get to it so with that let's go ahead and get started I'm gonna lay the file flat on the table and then holding this at an angle, kind of rub it along like that. Let me see if I can get a better angle for you.
Okay, so what I've done now is I've got both sides and the bottom cleaned up. And when I fit this in to this tenon, or to this dovetail rather, oops, it slides in about halfway. And if I go from the other side, it does the same thing, slides in about halfway. So I don't think I really want to go any further because I want this to wedge in. So what I'm going to do now is kind of put it in there. I'm going to mark the center. Lightly tap this into place. And if it's too hard, then do a little bit more. And so just like that, I was able to, I should have did it from that angle so you can see better. So what I did was I marked, marked the center of this, okay? Uh, let me unscrew this again. So I marked the center of this, which this thing comes out to about 2.8. Okay, so 1.4, and I marked a tiny little line right down the middle of it. And then I marked this uh, flat bottom is about 9, um, 0.9 millimeters, or no, I'm sorry, 9 millimeters across. And so then I marked 4.5, and then I just tapped tap this into place until the two little lines line up perfectly with each other. The stock has some leeway built into it. If you look, oh, let's see if I can get this in the right spot. The stock has some leeway built in. It just has to fit into that spot. However, if you're gonna, if you're gonna do something, you might as well do it right. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and Tap this into so if you can see now that is perfectly centered and this one was a little tighter than the last one which I'm not upset about you know tighter the better uh, so now we've got both of our tenons in and we're ready to move on to the next step. Okay, so now what we're working on is this space right here with the rear. So I don't break my stock here. We're trying to fit in our rear thimble. It's really tight. Um, you know, with everything else we were inletting the wood uh, however, with this one, we're going to be filing away the brass, so... sure that that's clamped in place stay in frame as much as I can here so we clamped the brass to the wood here now we're gonna use tighten it down just a little bit we'll lift that in place so that doesn't move we're gonna start out with a undersized screw okay And without, with, yeah, this clamp's in the way. Let's flip it around. Make sure 
picked up the new one. Yep, a 470. I think it's funny because the textbook, the textbook specifically says right here, says the size of the screw provided is an M470 metric, so finding and using a tap is not going to be convenient. Yeah, I went to Ace Hardware, it was pretty convenient. So, for your own gunsmithing abilities, you should probably do the same thing. Go get yourself a tap. All right, so we have our screw that we want. Boom, threads right in, so you can see it. Threading right in, threading right out. Nice and easy. We grabbed a screwdriver that fits the thread or the uh, the head of this particular screw perfectly. Just to show you, we'll put it right there. So we're set to go to screw that in. So I'm just going to push it out to flush there. So that's the best angle I can get to show you that the screw sticks up into the hole. So you can see we need to take off about an eighth of an inch of that screw there. So we'll go ahead and do that here in just a moment. And uh, I'll show you how we're going to do that. All right, so as you saw in that last little video, we drilled and tapped this, another reason to go ahead and purchase the tap so that we can use this steel. This is just a mild steel. Um, we can adjust this, screw it up to the point that we need to, and then use our file. Yeah. Remember whenever you're filing to go ahead and safety glasses. And uh, Okay, so what we've got here, I had to increase the countersink just a little bit more, which isn't that big of a deal. So I countersink the head just a little further, because, and the reason why is because I just got a little overzealous in my filing, so uh, it was probably fine, but I wanted to increase the connection. Um, so I'm gonna try and make it so you can see down inside the hole there. Uh, but basically, the bottom of the screw is now flush with the brass of the thimble so that when the rod slides in and out, uh, it doesn't hang up on it at all. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is find the halfway point uh, for our tenons, okay? so. And by that, what I mean is we have to fit these pins through blindly through a wood stock through the middle of this tenon and out the other side into the wood stock again, which means that there's not a lot of play when it comes to this little spot right here, up and down or left and right, a little bit more forward and back, not as much up and down. So.
All right, so ran into a bit of an issue. Our barrel is uh, very, very tight here in the back part. Um, it's okay up at the front. It's not okay back here. So we're going to have to do some inletting. All right, after much inletting, we finally got the barrel seated. Um, I have my marks for where the tenons are. So we are ready to mark and um, drill the tenons to hold the barrel on, so the barrel pins. Okay, we're out at the drill press. We got set up. We're using the, whatever it was, it's like a number three or something drill bit. Uh, the one that matched up with the pin size. We've got some leather in our vise to protect the firearm. The vise is doing two things. It's holding the firearm in place, but it's also holding this the barrel into the stock tightly. Uh, we've got our line marked we used our square to get the distance the the straight line and then we've got our um, um, distance from the top to the middle using our calipers and we're going to go ahead here now and drill 90 percent of the way I'm not sure yet if I want to go 100% of the way, just in case. I checked as best as I could, and I'm pretty sure that this plane is perpendicular to the plane at the top of the barrel, but what I'm afraid of is if it's off at all, um, what you're going to find is that the hole comes out on the other side in a different spot. Um, I'm I'm fairly confident that we're in a good position here though, so let's go ahead and drill.
this is gonna take a second for me to figure out. I was able to get it out. There was just enough of the bit sticking out for me to be able to grab with pliers and unspin it out. But despite my best efforts, we were great on the forward and back, but that's why it broke because we hit too low. So when the drill bit tried to go by it, it uh, kind of cammed off the side and broke the bit. So there's our old hole. And I marked on our stock the equivalent on the other side. So what I'm going to do is basically use the upper edge of that and go back through and I might just, you know, that hole kind of got off at an angle now. So let's, let's come from this side and see what happens on this hole when we go through uh, straight. Well, would you look at that? Would you just look at that? Ow. Would you look at that? Yeah, there's a few more blemishes on the car. The oh car, my gosh, just car, look at the it. The car is not perfect. Just look at it. <laughs> so, single hole, single hole. So what had happened was that other bit had curved down and that is what caused the problem in the first place. So now hopefully, Hopefully we can, you know, there's so much room down in here. I don't know why the designers made the tenon as short as it is. It should be longer then you wouldn't have that problem at all. But either way, uh, I'm gonna get this, the barrel back in place, get it stocked up and we should be able to go through that hole now and into, into the uh, barrel. So here we go. Okay, we have an even even spot there so there's the pin on one side there's the pin on the other and our barrel is now pinned to our rifle back inside all right despite uh, my best efforts of screwing this up somehow miraculously we're able to get a pretty decent looking pinholes on both sides uh, evenly spaced that hold our barrel in place in the right in the right spot on both the front and the back. So there's our pin there and our pin there. There's our pin. Where's it? See on here? Oh, right there. There's a pin there, and there's the pin there. Okay. So now that we have the pins in place, we can do our front uh, thimble. So let me get set up for that. So if you're curious, this is where we ended up with. Uh, there's one hole there. And there's, there's the other one. Not too shabby.
All right, we're set up. I've got my mark in here. I've got a smaller bit on here just for uh, doing our initial one. We're going to go straight down the middle. Okay, got our pilot hole. Now we're gonna go with our slightly bigger one. actually going to I'm gonna do that and I'm going to flip it over and do the other side that should keep us from having any kind of crazy blowout all right Nice and clean. Put on our countersink, wherever it's at. There it is. Oops. Now, let's see. So you can tell it's right in the middle there. See a little hole right in the middle. Countersink. Go back to the other side. Now we just need our screw, which is right here. Double check everything looks good, nice and flush. Looks as good as the back side does. Now let's find out how much sticks into the thimble. Where did I put my thimble? I just had it. This is snake did bite me. What do you do with it? To be continued. You know, when I uh, go back and watch this again and I see that it's sitting right here and I was staring at it the entire time, I'm going to be very frustrated. Either way, here we go. So, that goes right there. There's a little screwdriver right here. And we line this up with the little screw hole. So ironically, this one doesn't seem to be sticking out nearly as much as the other one, but it's still got about an eighth of an inch sticking inside of this hole here that we need to use our little jig. This thing we made earlier to file down. So let me go ahead and back it back out. how it's smooth there's no nothing protruding up in there all right so now for the real test let's grab a grab the ram right here and oh like we've got a catch going on in this one. Hey. All right, round two with this test here. Oh, 
Oh, it's the wood. It's the wood that's hitting on. I thought it was the threads of the screw. It's not the wood. Look at that. It's the actual brass itself. Brass that you get here. Is it supposed to stop like that? I think that concludes I think that concludes this week. We did uh, all together we did the pins, the tenons, the thimbles, inletting, a little bit of brass cleanup, and that completes week five of FTT 210 uh, practical application. Thanks. Bye. Final thoughts for FTT week five, um, or the week two of the muzzle loader practical application. Uh, this week, there were some struggles, especially with this uh, rear pin. Um, if I didn't explain it to you, the way I got that pin out was using a small pair of pliers and just grabbing a hold of the drill bit that got broke and just backing it out ever so carefully. And then uh, came in from the other side uh, with the pin and was able to basically exit out of the same hole so I didn't create a new hole uh, which is really nice then the front pin went perfect there was no issues there um, don't forget to clean up the back of this thimble if your uh, rod doesn't go through uh, the thimble itself was relatively easy um, other than that inletting um, make sure you get your barrel all the way seated before you put your pins in. So now that that's all the way seated, um, that's pretty much that for good for there. Um, recommendations. I highly recommend that you purchase the tap for that, which this is the tap right here that I used 04.7. Right there, that's from, uh, got that from um, Ace Hardware for like seven bucks or something. Uh, this is the drill bit that you, I used with it, is a number 30, that's the one it calls for. However, you could probably get away with using a eighth um, drill bit if you don't want to spend the money to get one of these. I would, you're going to need it eventually, you know, so uh, these are all tools that you're going to need at some point, so you might as well get them now. Uh, finally, the 3 8 um, 
countersink, that's the one I used, uh, worked great for countersinking. They make one smaller, probably could go with the one smaller, however, this one worked good, so I'm gonna go ahead and say recommend that one. So purchase these three things, it's like 20 bucks, and uh, it'll make your life a lot easier. You'll be able to make the little jig for um, filing down the screws that go into the brass thimbles. Um, this is just a piece of mild steel. You can get this at the hardware store as well. They come in like three foot sections for like five bucks, but you could, I'm hoping, beyond hope that most of you have some mild steel just sitting in your garage. And uh, that's pretty much it. So uh, we'll be back next week with some more for the SDI muzzle order build. And uh, thanks a lot for watching. All right, bye.